They're at the heart of a household and allow us to wind back the clock. This fireplace in the Gers region transports us to the 17th century. It's in the Chateau de Castelmore, the home of D'Artagnan, the most famous of the three musketeers. He lived here with his parents and his six brothers and sisters. They no doubt spent most of their time in this very room, around this fireplace. The fireplace is still at the centre of the household and family life. Built into this solid stone wall, the fireplace is basic. It was a rather modest setup for this noble local family. This fireplace is pretty majestic, but it's also very simple. There are no stone sculptures and there's no gilding or anything like that. This is what the interior would have been like. The castle is built around its fireplace. The simplicity is in keeping with the surrounding region's rural dwellings. They used local materials. Bits of brick and stone were gathered from rubble, and they would use that to build walls and construct simple structures with lime and sand. Simple, but sophisticated nonetheless. D'Artagnan's fireplace was equipped with a pastry oven and a huge roasting spit turned by a clock-like mechanism. A rope was thread through this pulley and the animal would then be winched up and put on the spit. It would stand on two tripods that were here and the animal was then turned with the help of this cog system. But not all fireplaces in the south of France are so austere. The proof can be found in the Tarn region at Castelnau de Montmiral. The Chateau de Mirag has loomed over the valley for almost a thousand years. The fireplaces here are huge but it's above all their lavish decoration that the current owners appreciate. The Ged family fell in love with them 40 years ago. We saw this fireplace and it just felt so out of place. We even wondered if it was a pastiche or something made much later. But this fireplace definitely dates from the 17th century. The story of the castle's first owners is carved into it. These fireplaces were often made for a marriage and their symbolism is all linked to love or virtue and they showcase the wealth of the family who ordered them. Another of the castle's treasures is currently being restored. I'm making small strokes. My brushes are very thin. Damaged over time and by the damp, this painting of the Holy Family from 1656 could have been lost forever. During the 1980s, the castle stood in ruins. Only the fireplace survived as if suspended in mid-air. You could see it from down below. All of this section was exposed, and there were no floorboards either. There are 15 or so fireplaces of this kind across the Tarn region, all of them made during the second half of the 17th century. One of the best-kept examples can be found at the Hôtel de Brun in Gaillac, a building which houses the town's archives. This was really one of the only places in France during this period of the 17th century where such over-the-top and impressive decorations could be found. But Baroque-style fireplaces weren't Louis XIV's cup of tea, and the Sun King soon put a stop to this type of extravagance. Further south, in the foothills of the Pyrenees, lies Montgaillard. It's a typical village of the Bigorre region, the walls and roofs are all grey, but the chimneys are made from red brick. Built in 1650, this building has been home to Jean-Louis's family ever since. As a child, he loved to settle down by the hearth. My special spot was right here. It's where I spent most of my evenings, because there was no television. The fireplace is rather stately, with a wooden bench at either side. The only nod to modernity is the wood-burning stove, which heats the room better and traps the smoke. It was built for the main living area, and that's why it's so big. You could come and sit by it, but the housekeeper could still carry on with her cooking. 
It's been a long time since the Caso family last used the fireplace to prepare a meal, but they still gather around it when they all meet up. And soon, the memories start flooding back. You'd be really cold behind it and really hot in front of it. That's what I remember. You had to leave that door slightly ajar to help the draft in the chimney. So any heat that came from the fire would actually just escape through there. Electricity and gas now provide a more practical solution to heating our homes. But nothing can beat the charm of a real fireplace. <laughs>